It's dinner time. You've had a long day and all you want is to nuke your hungry man dinner and watch a little of your idiot box. What to watch though? The wife is upset because she hates 60 minutes and you know Mike Wallace just lost a little bit of his fastball, but the old guy still shows some fireworks on occasion. She wants to watch those four ladies on the Sex in the City show. You enjoy their cattiness and grotesque descriptions of sex as much as any red-blooded American man, but you hate the narration aspect of the show. It's time for a compromise. But what will it be? And just like that, God sent down a little gift called Survivor and saved you from a divorce. The global rise in popularity soon followed, and the world was smothered by reality television. Today on No Accounting for Taste, reality television, friend or foe. Pal, you're good with words. You know that, man? I think the gym is dumb. Did Rachel was, walk in the room? Of course I've eaten a Baconator. Man, if you ain't doing CrossFit, you can get cross buff. You're Let's right. Shuffle. A long burger's not the worst idea I've ever heard. That's your sitcom right there as a, as a, as a Mr. Fix-It-All who just can't fix his heart. We will not be defending Atlantic City. No accounting for taste. If it's something that somebody loves, let's try and celebrate it instead of uh, shitting on it. Hello. Hey, buddy. How are you, bud? <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> oh, another, another oh, chuck- chuckly Saturday afternoon with the fellas. It sure is. It sure is. Uh, what have you been up to? Oh, well, I'm losing on my bachelor bracket. I'll tell you that much as pertaining to uh, oh. what we're going to talk about. Yeah, I got 10 bucks in a ba- in a pool and a bracket system <laughs> for The Bachelor. And I'm losing yeah. my Between ass. Between that and Dogecoin, you're in real trouble. I, you know, I didn't invest a- well over the last couple of weeks. I didn't. <laughs> Listen, you can spend money wisely or you Who can spend it fun, you know? <laughs> Said the guy who's about to be poor. <laughs> uh, well uh yeah well i speaking of the bachelor though um literally watched it for the first time this week uh with the uh, good old karen walktail yeah and what was, was that what you did in hawaii that was you watched it in hawaii no oh you guys were back dick. in denver all right i thought well because I, I knew you i knew you were yeah, out yeah, in yeah, hawaii yeah. uh I was like oh man yeah. you spent, uh, sometimes you got a knife night off from paradise and watch a little bachelor in paradise <laughs> yeah and, and then you yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm not i didn't know you were such a fan of it are you I'm watching not, for? listen it's not so much that i'm a fan as much as i i learned how to watch it if that makes sense i uh, as we were going to talk Explain about this that, week because that does I, I will we're yeah. talking about reality television this week and i think that yeah. For me, much like many people, I would watch it and just be like, this is garbage and what a waste. And then as somebody who's in entertainment and you know you're trying to create original content and all this and like, oh, here's ideas and pitching shows. For, and like, And then a bunch of slags get on yeah. there and fight over some doofus. And that's <laughs> been on yeah, yeah. <laughs> for decades. A, <laughs> yeah. But if you watch it like sports, yeah, a, that's it's that's two hyper competitive Remax reorders. Yeah, I started watching it because Rachel would get like a few years ago. They would rent a side room of a bar, and the, they they would watch it there. And like all these people come and watch The Bachelor, and then yell at the TV like it was a sporting event. Oh, like, like a Rocky like, Horror Picture Show kind of thing. Very much so, and I'm like. Okay, if you're watching something with the same like-mindedness as others, and that amount of like vigor and like vitri- like it's not so much about the show to some degree. It, absolutely. And instead of thinking like, "Oh, what a waste of time. What a waste of my time to watch this." It's like, "No, it's the same thing as watching sport. Like I'm having fun with the people who are also watching it." Yeah. So, if for, who cares what the conduit is? That's bringing us a good time. Personally, I watched some this week in preparation for this. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> some of it, I get the uh, the thing you're saying about like doing it with other people, but like some of it was just so unbecoming to me. Like the, even the little, it was like a, it was like a, a f- smorgasbord of like little shitty things, but there were a few I really liked. And actually Charlene, our producer got me into one during the start of the pandemic 
or one of my like a person I actually just ended up adoring was Latrice Royale from Drag Race. Do you know who that is? What uh, no, I a joke I was doing was about how <laughs> I am indifferent towards uh, mixed martial arts and RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know where to live. I don't know where my home is. Because like, it seems like you, it's like an, it for so many people, it's like an either or like, oh, that's a drag race person or that's somebody who's into UFC. And then the middle ground is professional wrestling, which makes sense because it has pageantry <laughs> and athleticism. And even that yeah. I'm like, I don't care about it, but I know people are nuts yeah. about the drag race. I know people are it, nuts. About it's it. fant. She's thunky. She's what she's thick. She's chunky. She's large and in charge. She's Latrice Royale. And it's dynamite. It's just how is that not a wrestling up- intro? <laughs> it's pretty fucking close, to be honest with you. But the it's amazing. They make their own costumes. They're talented, talented women or people. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not trying to. I'm on this the right side of this. I just don't know what I'm supposed to say and not get in trouble for language. That is a confusing one. Yeah. 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 Is it is someone in drag a, a she or a they or a he? So just a We're legitimate question to put out there. We're just a legitimate yeah. question to put out there, not a judgment. Let us know. And, let us know. Yeah. But we're genuinely asking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any other personal experience with it? I made a tape, I think, when I was in high school to try and be on the real world. I think I submitted, I submitted a tape to be on the real world. And my buddy who made the tape for oh. me sent it to me. And I'm like, well, we need to hide this forever. <laughs> this needs to go away what, forever what, and ever. Tell us about this. Stuck. <laughs> I want to hear about this. It was, it was just like an 18 year old's attempt at comedy of like me with like one of the Rasta hats doing a Bob Marley impersonation. Like just bad. Oh, boy. Just bad eight, yeah. No. Yeah. I'm like, look at me. I'm a character. I'm a, I'll be the clown on your show. Bad. Yeah. This is this tape still around. Uh, it's somewhere, but it won't be for long if I can get this is my like, hands on it. Do you ever see the Inside Man? That movie with Denzel Washington? No. He's a it's a he's a cop, and there's a bank heist, and Christopher Plummer owns the bank. And yeah. what the what the bank R. heist? R. He's trying, yeah. But he's trying to find a he's finding a ring that was like he basically Christopher Plummer's back backstory was that he got rich helping the Nazis in the war, and this ring was the only thing that could sink him. This is pretty much what your uh, your reality, your real world tape is. Wasn't he like a secret Nazi in a bunch of movies? Any, uh, well, anyway, we're <laughs> off topic. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's that's your other podcast. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, Christopher Plummer is here. I do want to say in the notes, which I now, as I remember that we can drag across the screen, not just up and down. Uh, Charlene put in her notes that she once got her boyfriend on HGTV's uh, Best Handyman, which I did not know was a show. <laughs> <laughs> and she told him, "Don't be at a don't be a know it all on the show." He was and got kicked <laughs> off on the first episode. Once the show aired, he promptly broke up with me. I, I think you dodged a I think you dodged a bullet on that yeah, one, Charlene. Yeah. Only thing this guy couldn't fix was a shitty attitude. If you ask me, <laughs> what a frustrate! What a frustrate! That's your sitcom right there, as a as a as a Mister Fix It All who just can't fix his heart. You know, just can't. I think that was called Home Improvement. Was it? Well, they were yeah. Just called well, suburb suburban libertarian makes fart noises and connects with millions. Yeah, former cokehead is rich. Co- co- uh, yeah, coke snitch turned family <laughs> man Tim Allen <laughs> bitches about Lamborghini repairs on stage at the Laugh Factory. Um, what a, what, yeah, what a dickhead. Uh, that's the guy fighting for the everyman these days. Um, <laughs> anyway, what? I. Yeah. Once I bought a full cable package when I was living by myself uh, and it wasn't like we're going back about eight years and maybe 2012. Okay. When I'm like, give me the full, I'm getting satellite TV or dish TV. Cause I'm finally, I got my own apartment and I'm going to get off the road. And instead of being at bars at night, like this will be my, my bar tab will be this full cable package full of trash. And I started watching all of it. Whoa. I got into it. My, what really appealed to you? I don't. I think it's. I mean, what shows? So I, I, I really watched a lot of Street Outlaws, which was just a completely <laughs> scripted idea about dra- dra- illegal drag racers in Oklahoma. There, it's wasn't good, 
but I acknowledged the fact that it wasn't good. And yeah. I was like, this is, this is put, this is putting my brain in neutral for now. Okay. I'm not mad. I'm not sad. I'm not happy. I'm just, it's like, it is, it was literal white noise. Cause it was that does just seem like it would have the, about the same like adverse effects as like a couple of shots of whiskey. Did you grow up in a household with TV on all the time? No, my folks were pretty like, when we were really young, my mom was like, like absolutely no TV during the weekdays really? at all. And then uh, somewhere along, like, you know, when a divorce happens, it's just like, well, somebody's <laughs> got to watch them. <laughs> so uh, then it became, yeah. And then uh, I'm pretty sure that's actually what killed my father was too much television. <laughs> so, that, that sucked him away from life. Yeah. It was just like, basically the lazy boy was a coffin that was soft. Uh, like if you ask me, but we i remember my experience was cuz you remember like in the beginning reality tv was so like there was just so much of it no matter like like there was nothing was off limits they were just making everything they could and seeing what yeah. would stick it got so hot it's like tiktok or something uh mm-hmm. but one of the shows i watched for a little bit was meet my folks do you remember this one? No. I mean, it was fucking bottom of the bear. It was dog shit. Uh, but it was, it was like these men, these suitors. It's kind of like the bachelor ask like a dating show. Yeah. And these guys would go to a woman's house and meet her family. And then they would like run them through the ringer. Like she works on a ranch. And then it'd be like all these yoked LA guys, but they couldn't lift a hay bale to save their lives. And then the yeah. girl's mom would just walk over and like, throw it over her shoulders and do a bunch of gorilla presses with it. And I fucking for a short while, I like genuinely looked forward to that show every week. And I have no idea why, because I think it was a bad version of reality television itself. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, it, like I grew up where there was a TV on all the time. Just the sound of not forget about what show it was. That was the background to my existence it's still you go to my folks house now and there's it's the ambient there's more tvs on than there are people in the household and sometimes (laughs) they're on the same channel but the delay in broadcast makes it sound like you're in a stadium because you'll hear like and it was always it was either the weather channel growing up just a just to have it on just because silence could not be tolerated in my house so it was always the weather channel now it's hgtv which in okay. itself is sort of reality TV. It's not, it's not yeah. serialized. It's not, it's not a written program. It's, you know, fixer upper shows or, you know, you can watch. Well, it's like a consumption network. Like you just like keep eating. A consumption yeah. network. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real <laughs> thing. I, yeah. I like that. But yeah, so, so, that's our, so, that's our jump off from this podcast is the consumption network will be our next. Consu- w- yeah. Well, we just get, but that's, we just get TB on video. <laughs> I, I, I feel bad. Go, cause now we're talking about it, even though this is audio. I always have a rag with me now because I get liquid in the mustache if I'm drinking, but people think I'm like, I'm coughing up my turbo TB lungs because I'm always <laughs> dabbing my face with a rag. But neither here nor there. But so when I got that cable package, I'm like, oh, all this stuff can be on. Yeah. I can feel slightly better about who I am because they're not making reality TV about people who are doing fine or if it is people who are rich they have to inject some sort of false drama but i would i would watch yeah like my 600 pound life which i it it was more like fast like it was fascinating and not to sound bad but like of what like it was like a human condition show and you watch because it's like you want to judge it but you they would talk about how they got to that point in their life of being ob and it was like oh that's psychological trauma. And I, I would watch intervention. I had to watch intervention when I had my court appointed stuff after I got a DUI. And I, so that made me understand, uh, people's issues. Um, but like, like, Oh, you, it's watching people that have suffered, uh, you know, emotional trauma and how they've dealt with it. So as much as you are yeah. watching it, cause it's like, Oh, it's this, you're on the sidelines watching a freak show aspect. Yeah. I truly did watch it. Cause it was like, Oh, look at this is a real, it made me less judgmental of those people when I saw them in real life. Yeah. Like there's a, yeah. 
I guess it serves a purpose, but often, t- I think especially in the beginning of reality TV, it was like mm-hmm. so predatory feeling. Yeah. Like the way they were making it and stuff. And then I think they got enough shit from people. They had to find a way to spin it into a golden turd. Yeah. And yeah, I will say, <laughs> have you never been on a reality TV show? Have you? No. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Cause also we have to think, what's the definition of a reality TV it, show. Like it's when I was, re- it's so fucking broad. It's insane now. Cause like, it's not a subject, you know? And it's kind of mm-hmm. like, and it's not even how it's done because like, yeah. you know, some of them are competition shows and some of them are survival shows. And some of them are like game shows and not script. It, like, you know, I would say survivors, a game up. show. Yeah. I would say survivors, oh, yeah, a game yeah. show, that stuff. I would say bachelor is more of a game show than it is a reality show. Okay, so uh, what would you say is more of a reality show? Well, I mean, I think it, I think the real world was, to what I can yeah. remember, being one of the first ones of like, here's strangers trying to get along. Let's see how people from different backgrounds yeah. interact with you. That was like, a, here's a Petri dish that we're going to throw all these different people into. Or like the Osbournes or the Kardashians, it's, it's okay, here's, it's still scripted. It's still a very heavily produced show. Yeah, but no, here's you're not. It's not Ozzy Osbourne, the guy biting the head off bats anymore. It's Ozzy Osbourne and his bratty kids trying to go get <laughs> fucking frozen yogurt or yeah. some shit. And that was the start of it. Yeah, it's like it's like a, yeah, it's like so reality, I guess, would be a little more like documentarian than like an element or a like come to like inserted kind of idea. Yeah. And then it, yeah. then it clearly was just a budget thing of like, oh, we don't have to build yeah. sets. We don't have to pay writers. That was, I witnessed that heartbreak firsthand when I was doing closed captioning. That was my last job before being full-time okay. stand-up. And it was a lot of people <laughs> that were, that had come to LA to be TV writers. But then yeah. because they were writers, their skill set was also being able to type and, and grammar. Yeah. yeah. And so their job was to close caption re- and we have to close caption reality TV. And so to see somebody whose whole uh, intent and dream in life was to write scripts for television to then have to <laughs> dictate, That's like transcribe real housewives and just having to put in parentheses. And I've had to do this many times incoherent shouting because it's just three idiots yelling at each other and you can't <laughs> discern what's what. And to see, to see like a room full of people doing that instead of creating their own original script, it was, it was a, a, a very existential level of heartbreak. I got yeah. to see at the job. <laughs> I would say that is the kind of thing that turns you into basically the same thing as a high school football coach who never made it. who has got a lot of issues. Yeah. You're just you're just yelling at a computer instead of a human being. It, the the anger was understandable at that job and at being frustrated of like trying to rewind yeah. and figure out which Duck Dynasty dildo was yeehaw and <laughs> what over the other one. So I will say when I was like I thought about it, I have had more reality TV show experience than I thought, like in my actual personal life. And I can get through. One of my buddies I went to high school with took Kelly Clarkson to prom. <laughs> yeah. Really? So, yeah. Like, I guess she's like kind of, she's would, uh, she's one of the first stars of it, right? Like from, uh, was that American Idol? Yeah. Yeah. She was the first, the original winner of American Idol. She from, was the, she worked Justin at the movie and theater. Kelly. Yeah. yeah. My boy, Joel, my boy, Joel took her to prom. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think he's, he's a gentleman. Good date. It's my uh, sister's boss right now is, is. Your buddy Joel. It's weird that my sister moved to Dallas just to work in a movie theater. Um, no, she works for <laughs> she works for Kelly Clarkson, so she's a very uh, sweet and genuine lady. Yeah, I bet, I bet she is. Just nice Texas girl. And then the other thing is, I worked with one of America's next top models <laughs> at, uh, at a TGI Fridays in Fort Worth. There was this beautiful girl, oh, Marvita God. Washington. I wanted that to be after the show. Oh no! Well, she was like on and off. Like I think she. Uh, this go, you know, but apparently she was like a real like pistol on the show. She'd be like, "Fuck all these skinny bitches," and then she would just like walk off, and stuff. Uh, which is pretty funny to me. And then uh, I had my own stint on a reality show, uh, uh, Last Comic Standing, the thing that was gonna oh. make me a star. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> Charlene, you might remember this, but I got the show, 
and uh, whatever didn't get passed, which is not surprising. Uh, but uh, they were they did they sent me an email. And they're like, you're gonna be on the top 100 jokes and the top 50 jokes, like their little clip show episode. And then uh, everybody was like, well, we'll watch it at the club. We'll watch it at. Sherlin yeah. goes, oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we we're like, well, I'll, we'll all watch it at the club. And um, it was just counting down like 100, not Shane, not Shane, all the way. And then like I was there with Carmel and Sean. They were like, well, definitely top 10 then. You're definitely in the top 10. And then we'd like by the end, it was just so <laughs> bleak. It was just like. <laughs> no. Nope. And then like all these people that I went to high school with on Facebook were like, where were you? You said you were going to be on. And all this kind of shit. And then oh. I was in the, the only reason I wasn't a liar is because somebody like with their DVR backed up and saw me in the background behind like Mike Vecchione and, you know, some comic that had a pigeon for a, a side act, you know, like, <laughs> and they were like, there he is. Oh, that's- and then the, a couple people were like, you were great. <laughs> yeah. You never tell people. I learned that early on. You never yeah. tell people, oh, you're going to. You're going to be in this segment. You're going to be in here. Like you wait to see it first and then you talk about it. But yeah, if we want to, I will shit all over last comic standing as a program. I remember the first year they came around, I was in Chicago. They're like, all right, this is going to be a TV show for standups. We didn't know it was still like um, maybe 2000 before the idea of just exploiting suckers for clips yeah. was really that. Yeah. So uh, I sat in the cold outside waiting to get into where they were auditioning for hours they uh well we're gonna break for lunch realizing now maybe it's a union thing like okay you break for lunch but i can't leave this spot in line in the fucking freezing cold because i want to get in there but you guys take your time and get some lunch then they came back and then they closed the door i think there was like eight people left out of ever a couple of hundred people they saw and they closed yeah. the door with eight people left Oh, no, we're done. we don't need any more. <laughs> I was like, I swam like, fuck you guys. Fuck this show. And then they, they in LA, they're like, somebody's like, no, you don't have to do the line thing. We just want to see you as like a potential candidate. I'm like, ah, I went against my best interest to go back on my word. Oh no, I did my, I didn't have to wait in line, but I stood on stage uh, on the, uh, at the improv with the three judges, they weren't taping, but they were setting up the lighting for the showcase later. And so I had to tell my joke while the lighting and crew guys were yelling at each other while setting up. And that was my <laughs> second chance to audition. So last comic standing can kiss my ass and don't edit this out. Good. Yeah. Anyway. And with that, <laughs> that Kyle and Shay Torres will move in to our next break. All right, everybody. Um, we've spoken our piece about how we feel about the old reality television, but we ask you to call in, and we appreciate you for uh, for doing that. And we like we get Thanks. a variety of uh, opinions and attitudes on what people like and what people think, and some people, uh, really like. I mean, they they really get into it, and they have a real nuanced take, more nuanced for- than we have on these <sighs> things. Let's actually go. To, I will uh, say America's as split as this as it is on anything else. <laughs> it's a it's a diverse nation. So let's go. All right. Let's listen. To, we have a succinct opinion here. Let's see what this uh, what this individual thinks. Reality TV can suck my asshole. And there you go. Right to the point, And uh, we appreciate you calling in. I hope you didn't use too much of your data plan to get that one into yeah. us. Uh, I like. I love that he had to take a breath in the word reality. Like he didn't get it all. I was like very like reality TV can suck my asshole. I, I, you know what? I feel that many people have that attitude. I can only imagine trying to explain to my dad. Actually, I did. It did come up because I was talking about the bachelor bracket and my dad's like, isn't one of them a hooker? I'm like, eat no spoilers because <laughs> he's he, do, oh, he does. He does watch local news, which what's more of a reality TV show than the local news trying to compete for your viewership over all other things. They can't just give you the weather and dry retellings of uh, 
you know, the local ordinance readings. They got to get into it. They got to give you the spicy bits. Yeah. So the Cubs go down three to two. One of the bachelorettes is a hooker and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning into WGTV. Some rumors floating around the mansion. Tune in at 11. <laughs> I read that one a lot. That's pretty good. I'm glad that you're dead. That's where your dad sticks it in. He's a he's oddly a complex man. Yeah, you never know what he's going to wind up uh, saying. He, he he winds up watching. But uh, okay, so reality TV can suck your asshole, but asshole. it's not sucking everybody's asshole. That's well, it could it's, be a bumper sticker or merch or something for a show. It, it's it's most television programming right now. I think so. It's not clearly other people's assholes are not being sucked by it. If that's the phrasing we want to use, uh, for instance, I think. Uh, well, we have a call from Lisa, and she has gone through just about every reality TV show in her voicemail. So let's listen to that. We'll, we'll pause Please. to analyze. Hello, this is Lisa. Um, I, is this Kyle and Shane? Maybe. I love reality television. I've loved it um, since the beginning. I watch Real World. Yes. I yeah. watch Simple Life, Osborne. Um, I'm blanking, but I've been committed since the start. Uh, Bravo is my favorite channel. I like the competitions, Project Runway. I love Top Chef. And then I love I did. all the housewives. I Okay, let's pause. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that who I think it is? I believe this is uh, Lisa Traeger. Yeah, one of my the favorites. Hilarious. Yeah, she's amazing. Yes. <laughs> what do I... I will say... When I was bartending at this bar super late in Portland, I would come home at like 4 a.m. every night. And for some reason, I, well, not for some reason, I just couldn't sleep. And then I would just mm-hmm. marathon Top Chef on Bravo because they'd be doing their reruns right then. And I got like very, it was something like I rushed to get home to after a while. Yeah. Uh, and then I started following them on social media. Shit, and it was, and then like, I don't know. They all just seem shitty after a little bit, and I got out of it. But a, a low impact manufactured drama can serve its pr- can serve its purpose. And but I mean, Lisa, Lisa's uh, uh, obviously fr- from the beginning though. Real world, right? Simple life was um was that Paris Hilton, Hilton and, uh, and Nicole Rich? That Nicole was like Richie. That was one of those ones. I was like, these women are fucking terrible. But when did uh, you watching that? When did you realize you were being played? That's the whole uh, moment with reality TV yeah. is when you as the viewer realize like, oh, me being mad at this is exactly what they that's, people are watching this going. These are great individuals that I respect and I yeah. look forward to their adventures every week. It's you watch it to go like. Somebody put it perfectly when they're like, when you watch reality TV, you actually sit there going, who watches this? You. <laughs> You're yeah, watching you're, it. You're doing it, yeah. A, I, a majority of the people watching it are watching with the same thing of like, who watches this? And then you leave it on for the 22 minutes plus commercials that it's on. You watched yeah. it. You, you have watched it. You took it. You help. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like the ordering from Amazon thing. It's like, you really shouldn't be doing that. And then just you secretly do it anyways. Yeah. It's very, uh, yeah. But I'll just do it. But if I just do I it do, once I, here, if I just, then, then it's a top rated show. Yeah. When I was watching Bachelor with Karen this week, I was Here's something that it taught me. I don't know if this is a good thing, but I found out that I'm a very reactive person because mm-hmm. I was watching Bachelor. I was like, these women are fucking trash. This guy's an asshole. You know, he always has his hand on someone's leg. Like, he just yeah. is always like, whenever this, whenever this guy is sitting down, he's always got his hand on someone's thigh. I'm like, who the fuck yeah. gets away with this in this day and age? Scumbag. But, and that's how I was reacting. I was like, he's a piece of shit. And then Karen was like, you need to calm down. This is just a TV show. And then I recognize like, so it works on me is what I'm saying. I am a dumb person. Uh, it, it, you're not dumb, but I think the programming can dictate the attitude you have towards okay. it. Like if thank I'm you. watching, if I'm watching, <laughs> thank like, thank you for that, that, that gracious excuse, <laughs> but you can't sit there and kind of, you know, you know, uh, pick your ass and half eat Taco Bell and then understand what's going on in like Michael Clayton, you know, like you got to watch, <laughs> you got to watch yeah. Michael Clayton. There's yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Like you do not need to be into all of it. 
Like, yeah, this does yeah. not require you to be operating at maximum mental capacity. Yeah, well, like, it's I think almost it's very like simple. sleeping. It's almost like sleeping. <laughs> I think it's kind of like, um, well, there's like, it's very simple to understand what the objective is, and you don't need to watch all of it. You like on on these shows, they're pretty late. Like, you mm-hmm. you know why there's so many boxing movies? Because so, everybody knows what is go- the what they're trying to achieve. Like just looking at it, and I feel like that's kind of what reality TV is too. It's like, oh, they're all trying to fuck that guy. Cool. Let's uh, let's, and then you don't need to know everything, but the details are fun. Yeah, and you all, uh, we'll get into that later. But I, I yeah, let's do another. Le- Le- Lisa's Lisa's still going. All the housewives except Dallas. Um, I don't need Southern vibes. Um, but Atlanta, Jersey, New York, <laughs> Beth Hills, Salt Lake, OC. Um, I gave up this year because of you know. They're like Trumpy, but I love all the housewives. I love Survivor. Um, I love a uh, top model. I love Drag Race. I like rich people. I've watched Bling Empire. I like <laughs> poor people. I like learning lessons. I love white <laughs> training staff. All right, like, wait, wait, wait. All right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lisa. That's what I love. She's yeah. she she likes rich people. She likes poor people. I didn't know Empire. I thought that was just a regular TV show. I didn't think that. Me was too. Reality. That's what I thought. I think is she's just into. She's just enjoying. Wife swap is ridiculous, and I did get into wife swap for a while. Is that you know that was like a? I was reading about it. That's that was a British show. First, it's always British, Brit- which is British crazy to me because it seems yeah. like it. It seems like a very shitty american idea right like just on the surface like like if i saw that show and i was walking by a tv it's like of course this started here like that another thing but what okay what but as an american when you like i'm in the middle of watching the crown and you get this idea of england is this proper they have trash just like we do maybe oh, even more sure. so their whole page six paparazzi type of thing so they trust me they've churned out garbage Love Love Island, the English. Actually, we watched Love Island the first season, and it was th- surprisingly heartwarming. Go for, on, uh, but for people I auditioned just, for the voiceover on the American version. Didn't get, get it. Get, anybody get that? Get that voiceover money. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> get it. Get it. Get it. But it was they. It was like this rare occurrence where everybody kind of just got along. And understood what they were on the show for. And it's like <clears throat> people try to pair up. I don't know if you know the premise of the show, Love Island. They're a bunch no. of hot people stuck together in the middle of nowhere. And they all are like trading up partners and pairing up. And eventually one couple emerges after all the, you know, this group of people to win a million bucks. Or and I'm probably ruining it, but they all kind of understood why they were there like imagine all the women on the bachelor going like listen only one of us is going to get to the end but let's not be horrible about it let's establish friendships and cheer each other on even though we know that there's going to be a winner and the rest of us will be losers in this contest and that doesn't make for good tv except i was like very like happy to see a little more aware uh, is what you're saying like the, a little, the, the individuals, nicer? I think the individuals were, and by the second season, I think they told him like, listen, no, so-and-so said this about you. You're like, really got the producers got in there and really yeah. put their dirty fingers in the dough to really make it trash. Yeah. But I love Island. First of all, if you want to watch reality TV, but then still kind of see idiots getting along. It was, I, it wasn't bad. I'll say that. I'm not okay. going to say good, like, but it wasn't bad. All right, good. Cause I'm going to have, I have, this is prompting some questions for me after, like when we get towards the end of the show, that this is good. Mm-hmm. I, I do take a little offense that she was just like, I liked all of them, but Dallas, uh, as somebody who's from right next door, uh, um, well, doesn't want Southern also, vibes, but then watch the Atlanta one. So I don't know. But also well, no, Atl- I, I know those women that she's talking about. And I was like, good. I fucking hated those women too. Yeah. I, I like, I tried to watch a Real Housewives last night to kind of prep, and I yeah. didn't make it. I made about seven minutes. Yeah, I, I was like, I will not give my synapses this. This will not use any of my brain space. Well, some of them are just like such versions of what they think they are. You know, like some some of the people I watch on the reality shows. I'm just like, do you actually have any idea who you are as a person at all? 
or are you just like, you know, or are you just like regional cuisine? You know, like this is how this is supposed to taste. Fucking yeah, yeah. Well, and, and now, now, I think we can, it, it leads itself into a uh, with Instagram and everybody being the star of their own show with social media. It is kind of taken the take took some of the wind out of the sails of reality TV because that's yeah. every, now everybody is like. I'm going to create this persona for my Instagram, for whatever social media, but they're emulating the behavior of these people that they've seen in these shows. Like, Oh, I got to do something extreme. I got to do this. Like, but, but to wake yeah. up and, and being a comedian is weird because, you know, you have people that are on your team or whatever that kind of want you to do that. Like, Oh, you should put some stuff. Yeah, up they want, on they, they, they want socials. us to. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. from a business standpoint, like here's here's a free TV channel, then you're the star. Yes, and that and people do understand that, and some people with YouTube or anything, you're the star of your own network, and you can do whatever you want, give or take. But I don't want to look at light like to to view your human experience as everything you do. How should this be a stunt Ugh. or a moment for yeah the the viewers? Is, that's a mental disorder to and it's me. fucking exhausting to even like think about trying to do like i can't like to me it's just like oh here's my thoughts out loud you know like for everyone to hear like when i'm like oh this burger looks great and then you tape it you know like it's like a narration of your whole life and it seems exhausting and that's i mean that's kind of what this like some of these reality shows are well, yeah, it's like you get like people that are trimmy. I, mean, I, well, I watched the Paris Hilton documentary, which is another one where she made it for herself. And like, because it was recommended to us by somebody like, you should watch this Paris Hilton documentary. It's really eye opening. And it, it wasn't at all. It was like, oh, no, you were just existed underneath the spotlights and cameras and you continue yeah. to do so. And that's you only know, like, I truly feel that there's no value placed on having a soul anymore. <laughs> Like it's that aboriginal yeah, right. element. We, we can't of, defend reality TV. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like that aboriginal element. I'm yeah. like, don't take a picture of me because you'll steal my soul. And I'm like, I think they were onto something. Because if you yeah. like, if you they were like, a real yeah. housewife, you'd be like, yeah, you are not. You're just a a, a vapid Botox shell that's been created by TLC or whatever fucking channel yes. you're on. Yeah, yeah. There's there's, there's yeah, they're just like, they're always on. It's gross. Ugh. Yeah, you're like orange chicken. You're just this shiny, candy, false exterior, and you open it up. You're like, that's not chicken at all. That's just some weird, decrepit, burnt <laughs> yeah, thing that I got at the Glendale Galleria. Yeah. Uh, which are two things you can find is dec- <laughs> like sunburned things and orange chicken at the Glendale Galleria. Orange Galleria. chicken and a real housewife you can't find yeah. in Glendale. I do think, like, a lot of them just seem to me to act like a lot of the subjects, they have that same thing that like former child stars have a lot of them where there's this like kind of gross, mm-hmm. thin candied response to everything, you know, yeah. like the first thing they say is what they want to say. And then they side eye for everyone to be entertained or whatever. I don't know. It's like, ugh. well, it's, it, it's like, what, what's your value been? How, how have you, been seen as what your value towards the world if it's being this obnoxious person like yeah. if you're a paris hilton type or something where your outlandish behavior is what makes people money and makes a network money and sells advertising and you have management or handlers for a teenager that's off yeah. the rails but the handlers are like that was really good that re- people really responded well. They say responded well. They don't say like. People didn't like it, yeah. but people responded. That's why they say engagement instead of liking these kind yeah. of yeah, like and so people that make yeah. money off you are encouraging uh, you to behave this way. Yeah, and that, I mean that's a and that's also they expect you to be that way. It's like there's a reason Stormy Daniels did a strip club tour, not a book tour. Like like they want to see the thing that they're known for. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Make, make that yeah. money, though. Make that money. Yeah. I don't blame. I don't blame. I'm not shitting on her. I'm just, you know, maybe she did no. do a book tour. I, well, I don't. Yeah. I don't know if she wrote a book. I think we still have about uh, uh, thirty five more up. minutes. of Lisa's. Thank voicemail. you, Lisa. Oh, I want to. I want to keep going because she covers Please. up. She covers so much. Please let Let's go to Lisa. 
I don't do Bachelorette or Bachelor or like. Okay. Repeated. But oh, I, I used to watch Flavor of Love. Um, sure. That was, mm-hmm. um, that changed television. But <laughs> uh, the Housewives are probably <laughs> my top. That's, That's the true. Awesome. Not the awesome. moon landing. Now, April 1st, which is very, very thrilling. Um, I like Below Deck. Um, those are people that live on a boat, work on a boat. People charter the boat. Um, I loved Gallery Girls. That was about um, rich girls that work at art galleries. Um, I don't do HCB. Oh, you know, I'll dabble in Kardashians. I'm not <laughs> or anything like that. I used to watch the Kathy Griffin. I love the list. Um, Johnny Cusate. I used to watch that. Um, I'm down for a reality uh, television. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I love, I love, I dabble in Kardashians like the way I would do Coke. Like, yeah, she didn't, do she didn't go full bore. She didn't have full tilt on yeah. it. It's, fucking, it's a wedding. Why not? Woo. I yeah. forgot about that below deck show that people like. That is one of those, like, let's point a camera at anything and see if it sticks. There is yeah. that type of show. Well, it, you know, that's like, that's the only, because since I don't really watch reality, reality television, that's how I know it's a hit because that's one. That is not an institution that I have actually heard about and seen. Yeah, like same. you know, like so, like when nobody knows what, like I'm like they're like this is Dan from Below Deck. That's who that is over there at the mall. You're like, I could give a fuck, yeah. but I do know that's a famous person with probably two hundred and fifty thousand Instagram followers or some shit like that. Now you know, like, uh, it's which like is a, weird. It's, which is also it's like weird job thing. porn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is a weird thing about I think just social media and reality TV in general is like that someone can be that famous and have like a million followers and most people can have no idea who they are. Well, there's fa- it's like compartmentalized fame. Like, it, like it back at one point, a movie star was a movie star and people for entertainment, either listened yeah. to music or watched movies, went to the movies. Yeah. It was like Errol Flynn and three other people too. Like yeah, it was also, yeah, yeah. Much, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was James Dean and Elvis Presley were like, but then now there's it's so compartmentalized. Like, what are you into? Oh, I'm just into anime. That's my thing. And I will go yeah. to a, a comic con. to see, like, So you can be fame. And again, going back to the social media, you could be famous in a niche area that people are, are rabid about, which is cool. I think that's, it's, it's kind of just great. sports movies and music, you know, it's, you can, yeah. yeah, no, there's, there is like a cool side to it. I just, yeah. I wonder about how much of it's poison, but. Uh, well, let's go to another show that Lisa yeah. talked about. John and Kate plus eight. I oh. think that's a, a heinous. I think there's I'm I'm sure that there's people out there thinking like, well, I only have six kids, which isn't reality TV numbers. If I could <laughs> plop out, if I could plop out some triplets. Maybe if I get some in vitro and plop out triplets, I can then move it up. And that, as the phrase I've seen online, is environmental terrorism. That's how I feel about having that many kids. That's, that is why it's true. Like, I think about that. Like, there was a house down the street from us, and both the parents, they had seven kids or something like that. Mm-hmm. And this, when I was growing up, both parents were doctors and they lived in our neighborhood. Uh, and it was only because. They had seven kids like mm-hmm. the most expensive thing in the world. You know, like, like he was a hand surgeon. She was an OBGYN. They were lovely people. I used to play she with her. She was kids. an OBGYN. Yeah. And she let that happen to her body. <laughs> they were religious too. They were religious. I've said like, I could take no, some for that one. She let that happen to her body, but they were nice people. Maybe she, maybe she, she knew how to stitch herself up like fucking commando or something. That's why she was all right with it. That's a, that's a reality <laughs> show I would watch self surgery. It's probably out there. Well, we could put together a pitch doc real quick, but I, I feel like that is some of the most poisonous. First off, start with the fact that who's signing the waivers for your three year old to agree to be on TV. Yeah. You, you shouldn't be a parent. Like if this is the kind yeah. of decisions you're going to make. Yeah. There's no legal counsel for a five-year-old to agree to the TV contract. Yeah. And yeah. are they, it's, what are they making? What are each of your eight children making? Your child labor army. 
Because, yeah, guess why people are watching that show? It's not John and Kate. It's the plus eight. So the plus eight better be making a shit ton more than or whatever the Dugars or whatever. Fucking oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. That's like human. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. That stuff is actually like kind of gross, like Spore very gross pods. to me because like, I don't know a lot, but I do know a parent's like interest for their child should only be about what's best for that child. Mm hmm. Like, and these are kind of the not, not the kind of people that I, I think are doing that. So fuck them. I, I hope their kids don't come out too damaged. No, I just, but I also like, I know in 20 years, their fucking youngest child, I'm going to think of as an asshole if they don't turn out. Okay. You know, like, and I'm not going to know why. What? Well, that's the, uh, that's what I was going to say. The YouTube thing of people seeing that as a viable way to make money, which sure get paid. Capitalism, capitalism's a clown show. The job market sucks. America is fucking sinking. And if yeah. you can go on YouTube and be like, well, oh, look at me. I play wacky songs and I'm a dipshit. And you yeah. get money for that. But, well, if doing goofy things with my family gets me money on YouTube, which means I can pay for my kid to go to college, isn't that serving? Yeah. But how do you know a kid, like we're saying, a kid who's raised being some YouTube weirdo is going to want to go to college when they already got That's what $5 I'm million dollars in their bank account for being exploited by their parents? Yeah. So that's what I think is like, you're not prioritizing that thought. Yeah. Like, like you're like, or, and then, but and financially you are. Yeah. But, uh, but even then it's like, that's also like, um, that's an environment you create. If you want your kid to go to college, yeah. it's not just a money thing. Like, and you know, and this is us reacting to it too. Maybe they are actually good parents, but I doubt it. You know, nah. like, yeah, let's do another nah. call. Hello. I love reality TV. I think it's the most fun, specifically the housewives franchise, but I only watch it with other people because it's too sad and scary if I watch it alone. <laughs> um, but it's really fun to watch with other people and like joke about it. Exactly. There you that, go. Thank you for, yeah, it's, if you use it as a conduit for a good time for you and your friends, you yeah. know what? Maybe we got to, maybe we need to thank these reality TV stars for putting themselves on display and for being punching bags, whether they know it or not, for the regular working folk to have something to view and feel better about themselves. I think it's fine now if you're just taking it in what it, for what it's supposed to be like I, mm -hmm. and take it into it's like if this is how you look at it, I can I can deal with it. But I don't know if I'll, I'll watch it that much, but I do like the idea of like making fun of things with people. And that's it. Like I like the communal aspect that people are seeming to make from this. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> some of the, I love and I don't like how much. It's giving people work, I guess, to some degree, like laborers. Well, okay, let's 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 come into the ending here and try to stick up for reality TV. Okay, let's try to do. It. I think maybe taking the word reality out of it, and here's people who are playing uh, hyper exaggerated versions of themselves, themselves for cameras. Yeah. Maybe these real housewives, there's nothing real about them. That's why they call it real housewives reality. Cause they, that's the labeling they need yep. to put on it instead of like unscripted TV. Nobody's going to tune into unscripted Script. rich women of Atlanta. <laughs> you don't think that's going to be like, no, you're probably right. I, I, I get, there's plenty to take from it. That's good. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of, <sighs> What I, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoy that you can be catty about people. Like it's fine to be catty, but I don't have to like, mm -hmm. I enjoy that. I can, as a thing in general. So like, I like being a little shitty and a little, and these, that's mm -hmm. what these shows are there for, I guess. I don't, I mean, that's what I'm taking from it. So I can get that out and not feel bad about shitting on someone who I don't know yeah. is, you know, getting giving VD to everybody on a yacht or whatever it is they do. <laughs> like, which yeah. is, yeah, it's got, it, it is just kind of like televised gossip to me. And I love gossip. Like it has the same feeling as like, did you hear this? Or do you don't like, so I can kind of deal with that. Like, I actually do like that. I'm on board. I love gossip 
so much. Yeah. And I think you nailed it with that one. It's like gossip, yeah. except it's not gossip about somebody you know. Yes. So, so it's, it's, it, it's, it's fine. It's, it's fat free. It's low cal gossip. Yeah. And it really takes, you know what else is like, it really takes the danger out of gossip since you don't know them, you know, like it's yeah. not like, it's not, there's like a little bit like, I don't have to worry about like you calling me like, Hey, I heard you were talking a lot of shit with me about me mm-hmm. with Charlene. You know, like this again, just be like, how oh, trashy this racket. I would never do that. And that is fun. That is fun. Yeah. And you, so you get to yeah. feel better about who, who you are. It, it, it is yeah. kind of a, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a crash test dummy sort of thing of like, Hey, would you guys get in here and be shitty <laughs> and I can judge you, but then it's, but it's all, it's for yeah. my well being. It's for my safety. Cause otherwise yeah. I'd have to talk like this about people I know. And that could ruin my relationships. It's now the my pe- career, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, the people like, I would normally gossip about, I get together yeah, with, a, and we watch yeah. you gossip. And uh, no one's going to, when I'm talking about the Real Housewives of Atlanta, no one's going to be like, that's my wife. Like, like I'm not going to like step in it a little bit, which is also nice. And if nice. somebody <laughs> said, that's my wife, I'd be like, buddy, you fucked yourself with this one. Yeah. Really? Her? <laughs> yeah. What were you thinking? Buddy, you fucked yourself. And then there was there, well, the the real housewives we turned on. There was something right away where there was a, a somebody had passed away in it, and it was I was kind of like it was a mix of trash and a real life event where I was like, "Yikes!" Like I just walked into this in seven minutes. I gotta I gotta get away from whatever this is. But uh, I i i think we, I think that's it. You I think you nailed it. It's gossip that is not. It, like I, it, it's, it's fat free gossip. Everybody gets yeah. to shit. Talk. Maybe we should thank these people that are on the reality. And shows you can let it go, which is that. nice. Yeah. Well, you can yeah. let it go. It doesn't affect you. There's no reaction from me. As soon as it's over, it's the same way I try to feel about sports. Now, when I like watch my team lose, I'm like, all right, I just wasted three hours and my feelings not as fun as it was. And that's it. Mm-hmm. I like, I like, yeah, there's no involvement. It takes the, it takes the danger out of gossip. It is. I think we unlocked the purpose of reality television. I said, like, it takes a danger out of gossip. I said it's kind of like sleeping, but you can still get chores done. Yeah, that is. Yeah, it's just on. Yeah, it, you don't feel alone when you're folding your t-shirts. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's like it's yeah, like this. Yeah. Like it's like the sleep mode on your computer. All the processes keep running. The updates happen. Yeah, but yeah. you're not overriding the system. You're like, I'm making ready. I don't feel so alone. It's playing in the background. These these losers are out there. Look at me. I'm fine. I exercise today. I'm making a meal for myself. It's the it's the Walmart at midnight thing too. You know, like if you want, the, yeah, this was yeah, like if you go at midnight to Walmart, you automatically feel better about yourself. It's that kind of thing, that kind of feeling too. There's something yeah. good to be taken from it. These Even emotional are, soldiers, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's nutrients in the bottom of the barrel too. They're just not as good. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I guess I, I guess I should take it, give it a. I shouldn't hate it so much. I, I, I that's fair. I do. Part of me, uh, you know, both of us being in the entertainment industry. Yeah, I What's would like to see pe- people's scripted shows get more rah rah than they do. Yeah, uh, but there's. I mean, everybody's got a phone with a camera on it, so it, it has leveled the playing field of what entertain, what dictates entertainment. For sure, for sure. And and so these people making money, like it, I'd say, they are hurting some things because when a, when a, when a show comes into pitch, like oh, I have this uh, concept for a show, and I would need sets and to pay actors and this and that yeah. versus. All I need is a camera crew, and I got five assholes that like to fart in each other's mouths in a garage <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. out by the county it is line. A, like, well, let's try right. that. We could try that for ten grand, yeah. or we could yeah, make your pilot for three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's very. It is like I, I guess as people who work in entertainment, we like, you know, we like we like art, and like gravitate to that more than content as like what matters to us. But there's a place for this, and I could like reality TV is content. Two middle-aged dudes with a podcast saying, we like art. I, I'm trying here, <laughs> you fucking prick. <laughs> uh, that's true. This is content, technically, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, no, we're part uh, of the same thing. We're part yeah, of the we same. are part of the problem. That is, the we are we are the freshest cell of cancer, is all we are. We're trying to act like... <laughs> well, um, can I... Before we bounce out, I do want to ask... Yeah. 
Do you have a favorite reality TV moment? A favorite reality TV or one that stands mo- out? Uh, what well, as of, as of lately? I think Ninety Day Fiance with Paul and Carini, where I cannot tell if it's kind of, the, the the joy. Is he the guy from guess, Oklahoma and she's like from Sao Paulo or something like that? That's all of them. That's every <laughs> single relationship. <laughs> Is yeah. is like a potential supermodel with some sort of like Amazonian s- skin issue and some <laughs> com- complete um, a bald tire goober from the back country going, I hope she likes this uh, children's mobile I made out of Bud Light cans. <laughs> like, gotta get the nursery ready. For when like Guan for when Guantanamo that. gets here, like it's it's a whole thing. But yeah, he, I it, it was one of those things where it, yeah. here's the part of reality. Like, is this is this guy for real? I hope not. Because when he was leaving to go visit her, his mother snuck a lock of her own hair into his suitcase. He wore a full body a mosquito net type thing because he was afraid of the worms that can crawl into your urethra when they went (laughs) swimming. And then at one point he got in a, they got in a fight. He ran away up a muddy hill because he was ashamed of himself. When he ran away, somebody came and robbed the crew, like just stuck up the crew, like stuck up a camera guy. And this (laughs) You can't script. And I was like, whoo, this, uh, that is a, <laughs> a memorable moment, a memorable season, yeah. a memorable couple from yeah. reality TV. I'll say that. I do like that. Uh, that that's, that's very, I would watch that. If you'll send me that clip or tell me what that, that was. That and, that that and ben Cro- yeah, that and Ben Cronenberg on uh, Last Comic last, Standing. Yeah, that's pretty it, good too. Or, or, or else I'll, I'll, I'll say. Who would have thought that uh, Ben Cronenberg uh, turned out to be the good guy in the Roseanne Bard dispute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or else, or Alex Hooper roasting everybody on the voice or America's got talent when he was on. Yeah. <laughs> Just went up there and roasted the judges. It, yeah. I love it. Alex Hooper. So when people take the yeah. form and then fuck with the form, I also enjoy. Yes, that. I do. Like there is, there are those moments. That's what Doogie Horner did that when he went nuts on America's got talent. He told everybody in Philadelphia to kiss his ass or something like that. Like, and they were all lunatics. <laughs> Ron Babcock and Ryan McGee did that on Last Comic Standing, but they went up as like beat poets or interpretive comedians and just had like a tambourine while one of them was like doing an interpretive dance. <laughs> yeah. Ma, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them and their exploitation. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I agree. Oh, I, um, what's yours? I, it was kind of, it was, it was short, but it was sweet. You remember that show, Joe Millionaire? I, was that a real show or was that them making fun of it? Or was that where like somebody was being pranked? I don't, it was I, real. It was a real anyway, reality TV explain show. Explain the what show to me real quick. Premise of the show. Premise of the show is guy is super handsome construction worker. He makes about $14,000 a year, but they tell all these women that he's a million, like, you know, worth umpteen million dollars. Oh, okay. And they all don't know yeah. that he's not rich. And the episode where they the like remaining women it's very much bachelor like elimination kind of thing and the remaining women who find mm-hmm. out that he is not rich fucking let him have it it's pretty good <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> but then the there's like this moment they're like well if you if the girl he picks shows up you know like then it's true love or whatever and then they just both got a million dollars anyways like so, I was kind of like, "Fuck this guy! He doesn't deserve a million bucks." Like, I'm sure the show uh, wasn't his idea. It was his idea to get on it. So I was kind of yes and no, but like, I like seeing people get theirs, and he got his for a little bit. And I'm sure well, his life sucks yeah. now. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Uh, let's let's wrap it up in the um, alrighty. Well, in the I still think it serves its purpose. To make you feel I better. I do more than I thought I did, for sure. Yeah, I really, yeah. It, I, it, I have a bit greater appreciation for it than I did. 
I, I, w- I won't say it fills a void, but it fills a space. If that's a if, if that's a void that reality TV <laughs> fills, you should yeah. you should fix yourself. You should work on yourself. Yeah. But in the yeah. uh, Im- let's in the immortal words of our of our of our caller, reality TV can suck my asshole. <laughs>